uh, the question that we got from the discussion group is what is autonomic neuropathy and what is POTS? So, uh, for the listeners, we just finished going through uh, seminar part one of nerve pain and neuropathy, and we covered neuropathies. Um, now, what we're uh, uh, doing is answering some questions in, uh, out of a discussion group, a breakout group. And this is a pretty natural um, question. Um, we didn't cover it in a great deal of detail, but what we did, we did go over autonomic neuropathy a little bit. So, again, autonomic neuropathy, autonomic neuropathy is a form of a peripheral neuropathy or polyneuropathy, which affects the non-voluntary, non-sensory nervous system that you don't have to think about. The, 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 the nervous system that's supposed to function without you doing any work. Okay, this nervous system affects the internal organs, such as the bladder muscles, the cardiovascular system, the digestive tract, the genital organs, so sexual dysfunction, um, problems with bladder and bowel, problems with diarrhea, problems with uh, heart and um, and uh, blood pressure. So again, these nerves are not under your conscious control. They function automatically. They keep you going. When you stand up, they make your blood vessels and heart work correctly so you don't pass back out. The autonomic nerve fibers okay, form large collections in the, in the chest, the abdomen, the pelvis, outside the spinal cord. They have connections with the spinal cord and the brain. So, the, so um, autonomic neuropathy is the dysfunction of this nervous system. Okay? Neuropathy, nervous system not working. Okay? We see this very often in a group that's represented here today, diabetes mellitus, type 1 and 2. People who have long-standing diabetes can develop eventually autonomic neuropathy. Usually the sensory neuropathy is first, some motor neuropathy symptoms, and then the autonomic neuropathy. Autonomic neuropathy um, also can occur with other disorders like disorders of the central nervous system, like multiple system atrophy and other disorders that affect the brain and spinal cord. There's one called shy drager syndrome. Um, it looks like Parkinson's, but it has an autonomic component. Okay, so autonomic neuropathy means the nervous system is affected where the non-voluntary, non-sensory nervous system that affects your internal organs your cardiovascular system, digestive tract, genital genitalia is not working. Your any bladder conditions like bladder incontinence or urine retention, gastrointestinal tract things like not swallowing normally, abdominal pain and bloating, nausea, vomiting, malabsorption, uh, diarrhea, incontinence, your stomach not emptying, cardiovascular disturbances like your heart rate going too slow, too fast, or when you stand up you pass out because you don't, uh, your heart rate doesn't increase enough when you stand up to make up for it. Blood, your blood, your vascular tone or your, or the blood vessels also may not uh, work. And other things like um, we t in diabetes, you may be unaware that you're becoming hypoglycemic. Uh, you could also have genitalia impotence, uh, sexual dysfunction, orgasm problems, and sweat disturbances. These are all things that are with autonomic neuropathy. Now, we discussed the reflex sympathetic dystrophy too in complex regional pain syndrome. Those are different, although the autonomic nervous system, the sympathetic, especially the sympathetic mediated system, is involved. Now, POTS. 
Potts, which a couple of people have mentioned, but no one has said the full name. Does anyone know what POTS stands for? Postural Orthostatic Tachycardic Syndrome. <coughs> a lot of people take standing up <coughs> or taking a shower for granted. <coughs> Excuse me. Our bodies automatically adjust to the pull of gravity. Let me take a drink real quick. Excuse me. By increasing vascular tone, heart rate, and therefore the output from the heart. The blood vessels contract, heart rate increases, your blood pressure remains the same or decreases slightly. It adjusts. Make sure that sitting, standing, moving around is fine. But for people that have POTS or postural orthostatic tachycardia syndrome, they're, they're, they don't adjust appropriately to the pull of gravity, getting up, changing upright posture. They, the, what they have is orthostatic intolerance. They stand up, they pass out. They stand up, they're severely dizzy. Excessive heart rate occurs upon standing up. They'll experience, they'll experience these heart rates that increase 30 beats or more sometimes on standing. Um, it's not uncommon to see someone sitting there 70 and uh, go up to 120. These exaggerated heart rates increases when you rise. I think the definitions like they have various definitions, 3, 5, 10 minutes, but the hallmark is the excessive heart rate upon standing and all these autonomic nervous system dysregulations. It's an autonomic neuropathy and it's not an autonomic neuropathy from all these other things we discussed. Okay. When you stand, move around, your body should regulate your needs, your vascular tone, your heart rate, your blood pressure. Um, in people with POTS, things aren't going on right the right time, the right place for the body. Um, they have autonomic nervous system dysregulation. So, it's more complicated than that. Um, There's other abnormalities that can occur with them. A lot of them have digestive problems. Um, blood doesn't go to the right part of the intestinal system. A lot of nausea. Sometimes there's too much in part of the intestines and not enough in others. Difficulty digesting food, cramping, colicky like pains. Uh, POTS can be categorized um, and the category that people have been discussing today is primary idiopathic okay primary idiopathic is different from secondary People who develop POTS after becoming sick with a virus, giving birth, being exposed to great bodily stressors like surgery, trauma, chemotherapy, certain other therapies, um,
can occur. Some people have POTS their whole life. And they're primary idiopathic. So you have people that have this debilitating disorder because they develop it from certain processes and we're not exactly sure what happens and we have people that have the disorder they have it there is not a secondary disease or another cause related and it's still being subdivided so I don't want to get you confused on that there's a lot of people that have autonomic neuropathy there's a lot of people that have POTS so again there's there's people that have POTS because they have disease processes that gave them autonomic neuropathy. There's people that have autonomic neuropathy that don't have POTS. There's people that have POTS, idiopathic, primary. That's their disease. Uh, and, and it is a disorder. And we're still investigating it. And there's people that have POTS or postural orthostatic tachycardic syndrome due to secondary diseases. It's still being kind of categorized and compartmentalized, but you know, what mainly you need to know is it's a form of autonomic neuropathy. POTS is a form of autonomic neuropathy that the primary thing you see is this orthostatic intolerance, tachycardia, and these dysregulations and autonomic risk we, we discussed due to the blood not going where it's supposed to, the heart not working like it's supposed to. And autonomic neuropathy is a general term used for all these different autonomic things that can go wrong. Does that make, does that answer your question? I think so. We're getting closer. <laughs> okay, um, why don't I put together a handout and give it to you guys. Okay. Alright. Let's move on to the next question.